Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. What's up everybody and welcome back to another Blade review here at the channel. Thanks for coming and visiting with me as we take a look here at the Cold Steel Marauder. Absolutely iconic and designed and been used ever since the founding of the country basically. And you know, I, I think back to when the US Marines were first deployed in North Africa during the War of 1812 and around that era. Uh, and in every conflict since, some design similar to this has been deployed around the world long before that and for the US military. And so uh, Cold Steel has been producing for this for a long time without really any changes. This is still made uh, in Taiwan with uh, AUS-8 steel and it's one big blade. And so I've had this all the way from here in the, the jungles of Pennsylvania to the coast of Texas where I first picked it up and I've carried it all through the East Coast, through different terrain, different materials, pounded on it. We're gonna have some fun here in the Blade boot camp with this really wicked blade. So let's jump right in with clarifying a few things. This is a giant fighting knife. This is not ideal for the outdoors and for like woods survival tasks. If you like the profile, but you're you know gonna be using it as a camp knife basically, the Ontario Raider SP10 is a much better suited tool. Uh, you know, it's got a high carbon that's a little bit more shock resistant. It's got a different type of grind and has a bigger fuller handle and just weighs more. So it's just a better overall tool for woodworking uh, and survival tasks. This, I would argue, is just a straight up dedicated pig sticker. If you're, you know, in Texas, that's where I was initially using this. And, you know, you got to, you know, put down the pig that you, <laughs> you just took care of uh, or something like that or hand-to-hand -hand combat giant, you know, buoy knife. That's really where this is designed and it's not going to be as good in the outdoors as a woods tool. Some of that comes into just the overall designing. Now balance is a huge key component to a tool like this and it absolutely is really well balanced coming in at under 12 ounces for a nine inch from handle to tip blade that is excellent. So it is a very quick and nimble blade in the hand that you can easily manipulate and move around. It has that top and bottom guard that is huge from that craton handle with that really nice guard hook, secondary finger hook, and it does not feel uncomfortable. It works perfectly even with large size gloves and with my large size hands. That craton handle feels really comfortable with that slight contouring into that lanyard hole. The lanyard's not even needed. I even did chopping and hacking more for just the motion portion of it, but also to see how it would perform as a woods knife. Again, just not ideal for that, but this location right here in the handle just really does the job of keeping it locked into place and you are not going to actually ride up and hurt yourself you can hold it in reverse grip it's i don't think it's ideal for that it's not really designed for that i think it's much more that forward hammer grip that's just very natural and it's going to feel really good in the hand now the tapering of the handle was part of why it just wasn't that good as an outdoor tool you can see here it's nice and full but then it does taper now down near the neck a little bit if it had just kept that thickness all the way through like an srk it's a different type of handle than the srks even though it does have full contain construction it would have been a little bit more comfortable it was creating a hot spot when i was doing down leverage points for like a feather stick uh, and it just it wasn't comfortable doing that. I just would prefer a thicker, fatter handle. I can't get over the guard at all. There's no choil to grab and you know, kind of maneuver. So it's just not ideal. It's not fun to make a feather stick for a fire. With that, even though it does have a 90 degree spine that you could throw sparks with, and you know, the thickness is 0.19. So I mean, it's a robust blade all the way through. That great tip has a huge swedge and it's very thick. And, you know, I did pound on it. So, I mean, it's a robust blade. I was going through all types of wood, batoning. It does okay for a buoy knife because of how flat and large and how thick that swedge backer is. Good tip that will stab, but you're not going to be as, it's not like, you know, paper thin. It's, it's a robust tip that you can really get and stab into place um, and do what it's supposed to with that continuous trajectory of the blade. The blade ha has a continuous sweeping motion with that clip. So for stabbing and then for slashing, it is ideal. It does have a mild hollow grind. Again, just not quite ideal for outdoor use, particularly heavy outdoor use. Um, it held up fine again to all my hard chopping and batoning, but just a saber or a flat is, or full flat is better for that. Um, the edge geometry was good, going through different cordage and stuff like that for how thick, you know, yeah, and behind buddy. the stock the, the blade is. Uh -huh. So 
uh, it's still a thick blade, but again, coming into the manipulation of the tool uh, for stabbing and piercing, I mean, it's ideal. You know, I think about like 200, 300 years ago, having to go over the Rocky Mountains, you know, you're a hunter, you're a trapper, and you know, you need a, basically a self-defense tool against not only hostile peoples, but hostile animals wanting to take you out. This is gonna give you the reach that you need after, you know, you're out of ammo or it's too close to get, you know, your rifle pulled out and used against an animal like that or, you know, uh, uh, an individual. Now it's gonna come with that SecureX polymer sheath. No issues with that. It's worked well over the years. You can get your finger inside that guard, pull that sucker out very easily. You could lash it in different ways. It's ambidextrous, it's got the good nylon strap, big large belt loop so you can attach it to your belt and or, you know, lash it to a pack or something like that. And it's quiet. So if you are using this on a boar hunt uh, or something like that as a pig sticker, or you know, in a giant military you know application, a zombie apocalypse, you know whatever it is, it's not going to be rattling, clanking around like a lot of other polymer-based sheaths are in you know the fighting knife arena. So that's a really good selling point for the capability and kind of role that this is designed to have. So it is phenomenal what this is still going for. Uh, it, on average, it goes between like 75 and 85 dollars for a Taiwanese OS 8, you know, nine inch blade with everything that we're looking at. That's under hundred bucks. If you can pick this up for under hundred dollars and you're looking for a large fighting buoy, this is absolutely an excellent deal. I think for the materials, it's kind of mind boggling that they're still charging that price. So that's excellent. Uh, Cold Steel did send this over to me and be able to test out, review, give you guys my feedback, pros, cons, so you know how to better use your money uh, and whether or not this Marauder is the right choice for you. I will have a bunch of hyperlinks for you guys below over the distributors that we regularly partner with here. So if this tool makes sense for you or the competitive option, again, if you're looking for a woods knife that is a giant buoy, go with the Ontario uh, SB10 Raider. 1095 steel, made in America, excuse me, it's 1075 steel now. They've dropped it, so that's really shock resistant, and that's good, doesn't hold its edge, in my opinion, quite as long as uh, 1095, but it is more shock resistant and tougher than 1095. But a high carbon, uh, just, I, I believe it's actually a 10-incher, different grind, uh, fuller, bigger, fatter handle, so it'll feel more comfortable, you know, with shock when you're hitting wood and, you know, batoning and doing those type of things, running at about the same price, 65 to like $85, just depends on where you pick it up, who's selling it, you know, all that. So that'll be in the description box below. Um, hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit, determining which tool is best suited for you. I encourage you guys to um, leave a comment. Let me know what you think, what your experience with the Marauder is. There's some absolutely super cool attributes to the tool. If you need that pig sticker, self-defense blade, and you need nine inches of reach, it's hard to beat a blade like that. Uh, so 